Hello, hello, and welcome to my second video. Man, KSP2 sound design is fantastic. Easily one of the biggest step ups over KSP1. Anyway, in today's video, uh, we're gonna be doing the uh, fourth KSP2 weekly challenge, which is to create a uh, rocket based off either a real design or a real rocket. Uh, send it to Duna and then come back to Carbon. Now you may be asking me uh, which real design did I base this thing on? Well, <laughs> I might have stretched the rules a little bit. Realistically, this isn't exactly based on any one specific rocket, it's more so inspired by uh, what SpaceX is doing. If I had to uh, say, I'd say it's most similar to the uh, SpaceX Super Heavy. Effectively, this thing is designed to uh, lift the payload into a low carbon orbit, uh, then get itself back on a uh, suborbital trajectory and land itself back at KSC with a suicide burn. Now, as you can imagine, uh, without any mods, this, this is a bit of a challenge, but I'd say it was a pretty interesting one. Now that we separated the payload, uh, we can get about uh, getting the first stage booster back to the KSC. Realistically, the first stage isn't super difficult. Uh, what I'm doing here is just trying to get a uh, rough trajectory back to the KSC, and I'll basically take it from there. As you can see, the rocket is actually pretty stable. Uh, I placed these aerodynamic fins, fins more towards the back of the rocket, so it can hold a pretty good retrograde. Uh, Ideally, I would have liked to uh, make it a little bit more similar to what SpaceX is doing, which is put some aero brakes towards the top and maybe a couple of small fins at the bottom, but unfortunately, since aero brakes are not a thing in KSP2, I had to just uh, compromise a little bit. Also, originally, I didn't want to uh, make the suicide burn a little bit more realistic, which is where I would fire all of the engines at first to slow down, and then shut most of them down, leaving only a single vector on for the uh, final landing, but unfortunately uh, going to a single vector seemed to create a lot of uneven thrust that SAS couldn't handle, so I decided to go with a more simple setup. Oh my god, that's good thrust! That's good thrust! No! No! And now, here comes the hard part. Uh, realistically, the landing itself isn't super difficult once you uh, don't want to start burning. The hard part is to actually land the uh, booster in a specific location. Now, if I had access to mods, uh, which would let me uh, pinpoint where the rocket would land, uh, this would be a lot easier, like the mods that are in KSP1, but unfortunately, a specific mod hasn't been created yet, so I just had to eyeball it. Honestly, this took a lot of attempts, and I'm showing only like a super small fraction of them here. I think I have uh, well over two hours of footage of me trying to land this booster. Uh, I was pretty specific with, what, with, with where I wanted to land it. I wanted to land it directly onto the launch pad. As you can see here, I am getting a lot of uh, very close landings, but it did take forever for me to get... Uh, a couple of decent landing attempts that I was uh, sort of happy with.
So, with the landings out of the way, we can proceed with the rest of the mission, which is fairly ter trivial in comparison. Uh, doing an intercept isn't super difficult, and they do have a uh, fair amount of additional Delta V for extra wiggle room. Uh, realistically, uh, with the landings, I wasn't super happy with any of them. Uh, I did include a couple of my better landings at the end, one of which was a uh, more traditional suicide burn. Uh, with like minimal corrections right next to the launch pad. Uh, I mean, technically, I guess it is in inside the launch pad area since it's still inside the uh, the concrete part, the uh, concrete deluge, and it was uh, pretty well aligned with the uh, launch pad, so it was a decent attempt. And the second one that I included was the uh, correction burn onto the launch pad, although one of the legs did just slip off the launch pad and the rocket ended up resting on the uh, launch tower. But considering how time consuming the, um, the landings were, I decided to call it good enough, include a couple of my better attempts and move on. So anyway, on screen you guys can see me uh, plotting a Duna intercept, uh, executing a couple of little burns. And nothing too fancy, realistically. Although this mission didn't go without its hiccups either. Uh, I had a lot of issues landing on Duna, so surprisingly. Uh, a couple of them my fault, a couple of, a couple of them were bugs. Uh, on one of the attempts, uh, which was on me, I basically just forgot it to switch out of automatic suspension mode on the landing legs. So I landed, I landed fine, but once I went to uh, EVA, because my curve will offset the mass to one side of the lander, the lander just ended up toppling over. Now surprisingly it didn't explode and nothing broke, but it was on its side, so it was basically uh, inoperable and my guy was stranded. In another couple of attempts, uh, loading a quick save, my parachutes were gone. Uh, the um, When separating the first stage, which was the uh, interplanetary Poodle stage, I think. Maybe that's the KSP-1 name, I don't know. The Labradoodle, maybe. Well, whatever. Basically, when separating it close to Duna's atmosphere, my lander just exploded. Or uh, there's another little nifty bug that makes you uh, time warp past an atmosphere. So basically, if you're in non-physical time, time warp, and you're in a high enough time warp, uh, you might just time warp past an atmosphere without actually uh, interacting with it physically, and you won't get any aero breaking effect from it. So anyway, with that out of the way, uh, with the uh, Duna landing completed, uh, we're just gonna plot a uh, pretty quick return to Kerbin. Now originally, I did want to uh, include an Ike landing as well, but, uh, well, since we do have a fair bit of excess Delta V, but unfortunately, I was about 50 meters a second short from coming back to Kerbin. I did try for like like 40 minutes, I don't know, something like that. But it was just not possible, sadly. And I mean, maybe if I used the uh, interplanetary stage to uh, land on Duna, could have saved a little bit of Delta V and then the uh, and picked up Ike as well along with Duna. But eh, I figured it's probably not worth it in this mission. Uh, took long enough already with the uh, uh, suicide burns back to Kerbin. Anyway, as you can see, I've plotted a Kerbin trajectory and we're just gonna do a little aero break uh, at Kerbin to save some Delta V. Uh, not that we need to save it, but uh, I'm just kind of used to it from flying SSTOs most of the time. Now, for some reason, I decided to do a super high uh, Kerbin uh, atmospheric braking, which didn't really slow me down that much, so I had to uh, use the engines and do several more aero brakes, which I'll spare you from watching. Anyway, a couple of aero brakes later, we're just gonna plot a little trajectory to the KSC and land, well, almost at the KSC, we land at the, uh, one of the water ponds just besides the launch pad. So yeah, that's the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.